In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can do a reverse lookup. So our task here is to find the category header based on the combination of a value inside our matrix and the row header. If you know index and match, if you've watched my index and match basics video, what we did was to find a value inside the matrix based on the column header and the row header. Okay, so now what we're doing is the other way around. We have a value inside the matrix. We want to look at the combination of that value and the row header and find the column header. And you can see where the challenge is here that our values inside the matrix, they're not unique. So we have D sitting here, D sitting here and here. And it's only the combination of this and this that's going to give us the correct column header. Okay, and we want to make it flexible. So we want the user to select the product, to select the type, that's basically one of these A, B, C, D, E, and Fs. And based on that combination, they're gonna find the correct header. First off, let's just quickly go in and insert a data validation. So first off for the products, I'm just gonna highlight this. Okay, now for the types, I'm just going to type it in this is the combination my answer should be category two in this case okay but if someone picks product one and d my answer should be category four so our challenge is to find that and index and match is a great formula that's going to help us do just that. So let's start off with index. Now the first argument is index is the array and the array argument is basically only the area that your answer is in. So you don't need to highlight anything else, just where your answer is. So where could our answer be in this case? It's a category, right? I say find category, our answer cannot be A, B, C, D, cannot be a product, it can only be a category. So that's the only thing I need to highlight. Now, next argument, how many rows do I want to move inside my index area? I only have one row, I don't want to move anything. So I can skip that argument. Now comes the challenge. How many columns do I want to move? Now that depends on the combination of these two, right? So if I was doing this manually, what, would, what number do I need to give this in this case? Two, right? Because I need, this is my index area and I moved, need to move two columns because combination of D and product two is in the second place. So my answer should be, category two. Now that I have an idea about the formula that I need, I need to think about how to make that part, that two dynamic. Which function returns numbers? Is going to return the address, the position, the match function. So I can use the match here. What am I going to look for? Let's say I look for D inside my matrix, do I look for here, here, or here? Because ultimately, D could be anywhere, right? It could be here, here, or here. Now the problem I have is that I can't feed the match function a matrix because match can only walk one way on one way streets. It can either walk in a single row or a single column, but it gets confused like this. It doesn't know, should it go down? Should it go that way? And it results in an error, right? So we can just check it out. I'm gonna be looking for an exact match. So close bracket again, and there's my error. What I could do is to turn this part for the match function into a one-way street. And I could do that based on where product two is. So when we used index and match, generally we're returning in the end just one cell, right? But we don't necessarily need to do that because the index function can also return a range back. 
And that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to be converting this part into just one way. So in this case, we're going to convert it to B5 to G5, okay, in the same row. Now to do that, we're going to wrap it up in the index function. To index, we're going to feed that matrix. Index has no problem with that. It's fine. We're going to start to restrict that matrix based on where product two is sitting. So we're going to match for this value here. We're going to match for it right here. And we're going to look for an exact match. Okay, so that's my row function argument. The column argument here is optional because it's in square brackets, but it's not optional if I am highlighting a matrix. It still needs to know how many columns to move. I basically want to tell it, take every single column. I want to restrict the rows based on where product two is sitting in this case. I want to bring it down to here, but I want it to include every single column. So that means I need to put the Excel separator, but I don't necessarily need to put anything in there. Okay, because that means just take every single column and I go back to my original formula for my original match function. And I already left the formula, you can see it works. Category two is the right answer. Let's check or let's change product two to product three. I get category three, that's the combination. Now product one and D, it gives me category four. So that looks good. Let's change to A and product one, that gives me back category one. Okay, so that's how you can use index and match together with another index and match to do reverse lookups. And in this case, we use the index function two times. We used it once at the beginning to return one single cell. And we used it here inside the match function to return a range to the match function so that it's a one way street. So that match has no problem looking there for the correct category header. So that's how you can do reverse lookups in Excel using index and match. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like these type of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications when new videos like this one come out.